Joining me right now is Texas Congressman Michael McCall. He is the chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee and the chairman emeritus of the House Homeland Security Committee. Mr. Chairman, great to see you. Thank you so much for joining me this morning Hi. on such a busy and eventful morning. First, give us your sense of the overnight strikes. Well, you know, it's, it's about time. I was with the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff at his residence talking about the Houthi rebel and uh, how they have hit us. 450% uh, of shipping has been shut down in the Red Sea uh, since the Houthi rebels started these strikes. Uh, I'm glad uh, the call came in when I was actually with the chairman of the Joint Chiefs to strike the Houthi rebels. 60 targets, command and control, uh, Bahrain participated, the Netherlands, the UK. Uh, my my uh, view is uh, it's about time that we struck back. In that part of the region, that part of the world, all they understand is power. And now they understand that we have power. Uh, finally, that peace through strength, right? We're going to affect strength on that part of the region, the Houthi rebels, and hit them hard so they don't hit our shipping commercial vessels and our military as well. Um, so, um, you know, it was long overdue, but I'm glad they did it. Yeah, I mean, you've been saying that for some time, that we need some kind of a response from all of these attacks on our troops in the Middle East. And it's, you know, it's unnerving that we hadn't seen any response, but Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is still in the hospital. Congressman, the Pentagon Inspector General is now reviewing the roles, processes, and actions related to his hospitalization, which, as you know, was kept secret from everybody, including the White House, uh, for days. Your thoughts on this and, and, you know, the idea that he actually gave the directive to conduct these strikes from a hospital bed? I mean, listen, we're in a state of a proxy war, if you will, with Iran and with Russia. And the idea that the Secretary of Defense went under the radar to have hospitalization. Now, look, I give him, you know, the personal right to have a personal, you know, medical procedure. But for God's sakes, his chief of staff, uh, his aides uh, should have alerted uh, that the continuity of government is so important here. Uh, he reports directly to the commander in chief. Uh, he is incapacitated on anesthesia. His chief of staff failed him, and his aides did, by not informing uh, the president of the United States and the continuity of government. And I think it's very dangerous because, you know, when you have strikes like this going on and he's incapacitated, that is a dangerous uh, concept. So should he be fired? Should he step down? You know, we're going to get more answers. I want to know what the chief of staff was doing. Uh, I, you know, that somehow sick and then the deputies on vacation and where are the security aides and you know, I respect a man around Christmas wanting to get personal surgery done. Uh, however, um, it calls into, into play a lot of questions about continuity of government yeah. at a time, as I mentioned, when we are literally in two proxy wars, one against Russia, one against Iran. This should never have happened. Well, I mean, that's right. And what's also stunning to me is the fact that we're getting attacked, 130 attacks on U.S. troops in the Middle East since October 17th. And yeah. while we're getting attacked, nobody notices that the Secretary of Defense is not in the room. Nobody notices that Lloyd Austin is missing for four days. That just tells me that they were having no meetings on any of these attacks. They're ignoring the fact that our troops are getting attacked. Who's taking the call from our troops saying, we're getting attacked here in Iraq and Syria? That's also stunning to me. All of this with the backdrop of China's aggression, Congressman. The FBI's Houston office is now warning that the Chinese government may be cyber-stalking, physically intimidating, and harassing Chinese citizens who are naturalized U.S. citizens, families of dissidents in Texas who speak out against the Chinese Communist Party. Mm -hmm. We know that the Taiwanese elections are happening tomorrow. How concerned are you about all of this? And mm. we know the MO of the CCP. They will go and, and bully your family members if they're in China, if they don't like something you're saying, no matter where you are. No, of course. And, and you know, Maria, they bullied me. I mean, they I know had they 10 did. battleships and 70 fighter planes when I was in Taiwan. And 
told me not to meet with President Tsai, and they were in my home state of Texas bullying Chinese dissidents in my state of Texas, telling them to shut up wow. and stop talking about the elections. They are so worried about these elections, Maria, that are going to happen uh, in, in the next day uh, that I think are extremely important. You have President Tsai's party, the DPP, versus what's called the KMT party. KMT wants to normalize relations with China. The DPP wants more of the, you know, the sovereignty issue. And um, we're going to find out who's going to win tomorrow. And I predict, Maria, as we talked about, the outcome of this election will determine what China does next over the next year in terms of do they want to move forward with their what they call reunification of Taiwan with China, which will be extremely dangerous because, as you know, Taiwan has 90 percent of the advanced semiconductor manufacturing capability for the world. And if China owns or breaks that, if you thought COVID was bad, stay tuned. Wow. So 90 percent of advanced semiconductors made in Taiwan, if China acquires or invades or owns Taiwan, they'll be able to shut the world on and off. 100 percent. And all of our advanced uh, uh, missile systems, advanced uh, weapon systems, all rely on these advanced semiconductor chips. That's why I introduced and passed the chips bill, right? So we can pull supply chain out of Taiwan and start manufacturing it here in the United States. We got to put America first. We got to start manufacturing it here in the United States and get off of this, uh, this uh, you know, we're just basically dependent on Taiwan, and we can't be in that position. This could not be more serious, Congressman, and I know you're taking the border as serious as well. You're about to go back to the border for the umpteenth time. Congressman, it's great to mm -hmm. have you here this morning, and we'll be following your important work. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Maria. Always uh, good to be with you. Chairman Michael McCall. We'll be right back.